welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast, where it's all about fixing your marriage without your husband's conscious effort so that you feel desired and taken care of and special, even if it feels completely hopeless. I'm Laura Doyle, and today I'm talking about the step-by-step instructions for fixing your marriage. My guest, Suzette, was having recurring explosive arguments and felt coldness and distance from her husband. She was so lonely, but she made some very specific changes. And today, her marriage is fun, easy, and full of cuddles and playfulness. Even friends and family members have commented on the miracle in her family. Her husband tells his friends to tell their wives to listen to the Empowered Wife podcast. She's going to tell us how she did it so you can do it too. But first, let's talk about the step-by-step instructions on fixing your marriage, because I have some exciting news. When I first interviewed women who were happy in their marriages and asked them for their secrets, they said these crazy things that didn't make any sense to me at all. But I was desperate enough in my painful marriage to try what they said. And when I did the things that they talked about, that's when I got my miracle. My husband showed up like the man who wooed me again, the one I fell in love with originally, and he's been showing up that way ever since. So their crazy ideas were actually the thing that worked to make my marriage playful and passionate. I mean, who knew that women with actual happy marriages would know what actually works, right? Uh, This was a mind-blowing discovery for me because what those women told me was so very different than what I saw modeled by my parents who got divorced. And that's no coincidence, right? Of course, divorced people or unhappily married people aren't the best resource for information and practices that make a marriage last and thrive. That seems pretty obvious, right? But what if your parents' broken or unhappy marriage was your primary training on the inner workings of marriage? You'd have to learn the skills that contribute to a passionate, playful marriage elsewhere, right? And if you're anything like I was, you might not have even known there was something different to learn. I didn't know. So when these women pulled back the curtain and taught me about what respect looks like and how to make myself happy and let my husband make me happy too. I was excited to put it all in a book so everyone would have all the instructions that I knew I was surely missing. So over 20 years ago, as a new student of these magical skills that I was learning and practicing, I wrote those instructions down in a book as thoroughly as I could. And then the longer I taught those skills and supported other women who were learning them and practicing them, and I I was practicing them more myself, well, the more I learned. So I wrote another book, The Empowered Wife, so I could share all the new insights. I wanted every woman to have all the skills written out step-by-step so you could easily apply them, so you could have wins as quickly as possible and feel inspired and feel hopeful, which is so important if you want to have lasting change. And then to help women implement the skills they learned in the book, we grew the top relationship coaching organization in the world. And we started this podcast and I got to hear from tens of thousands of women who made their marriages shiny and amazing again by practicing the intimacy skills. So I learned even more about what helps women succeed with making their marriages last and thrive, even when they feel completely hopeless. So I'm proud and happy to say that I've updated and expanded the Empowered Wife book to include instructions on what to do if your husband is threatening to leave, if he has another woman, if he is asking for a divorce, uh, how to recover if you're the one who had an affair, and how to communicating if he's not communicating with you at all. I also spelled out the four pillars of the connection framework, which we've realized is so critical for lasting success. And I included new case studies for hope and inspiration. 
The mission to end world divorce is always a work in progress. And I'm still always learning how to best serve the women who want to end divorce in their world. And that's why I'm excited to announce the publication of the brand new updated and expanded edition of The Empowered Wife, Six Surprising Ways to Attract Your Husband's Time and Attention. It's just debuted. This new version of The Empowered Wife book has my best efforts to share access to the magic that I've experienced in my marriage and that I've experienced vicariously through hearing about so many other marriages. You might read the blogs and and listen to this podcast. Uh, You might listen to it on the regular. Maybe you've listened to every podcast. Uh, That is going to help. We talk about the six intimacy skills every single week on this podcast. And when I interview my guests, I ask her to share how she fixed her marriage. And I try to draw out the specific things that she did and how she did them, especially if they sound hard or unreasonable, because I want you to be able to do it too. But the intimacy skills are subtle and they're deep. They are so deep that I'm still learning after more than 20 years. And I can only take you so far with a blog or a podcast. You know, the intimacy skills are often mistakenly seen as a way to manipulate your husband instead of as a structure for bringing out his best by becoming your best self. And the very best way in the world to get a thorough understanding of the six intimacy skills, of why they're so powerful, of specific ways to put them into practice with step-by-step instructions is to get your hands on the updated and expanded edition of the book, The Empowered Wife, which is available in paperback and ebook form on Amazon and everywhere books are sold. Download it on your phone or your Kindle or your tablet to read in the waiting room or instead of the news to give you know-how and confidence about your marriage. And then share it with other women. Make it your book club book. Get it for your sister, your mom, your daughter, your bestie. Draft them into the Empowered Wife community by sharing what being a part of this community has done for you. This is how we can end world divorce, by getting the information in the new Empowered Wife book into as many women's hands as possible. Marriage transformation starts with understanding and having the right information in your hands. And that is what I want for every woman in the world. If you're wondering how to get started with fixing your relationship and making it shiny again, then you need a roadmap. Get six simple steps to follow that will set your relationship up for success. Discover three common mistakes that wives make trying to fix their relationship that just make things worse. When you download my free Adored Wife Roadmap, you can do that at getcherished.com. Go to getcherished.com now to get your roadmap in minutes. My guest Suzette was having recurring explosive arguments and felt coldness and distance from her husband. She was so lonely, but she made some very specific changes. And today her marriage is fun, easy, and full of cuddles and playfulness. Even friends and family members have commented on the miracle in her family. Her husband tells his friends to tell their wives to listen to this podcast. She's going to tell us how she did it so you can do it too. Suzette, welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast. Thank you so much for coming on. Hi, Laura. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor. Oh, I'm excited that you are here. You get to get <laughs> to hear your whole story. But take us back to the battle days. What was going on in your marriage? Okay, so um, to be honest, the battle days um, started when we were dating. Um, and it was, it was so bad that even though we had planned to get engaged, um, my, my husband was not even sure that he wanted to be engaged to me anymore. So, um, that was really painful. And, um, 
but I think I backed off and, you know, things got better and we got married and then um, we got married and we had a plan and it was his plan. And um, I, I guess I was more docile when we were engaged. <laughs> and then once we got married, I decided to chunk his plan to wait to start a family. And I just superimposed my plan to have a baby right away. Um, and so I guess I just really started what I know now to disrespect him from the very beginning. And just, you know, everything he said was optional. Um, and I, I, uh, yeah, it just kind of got worse from there. Um, we would argue often like loud screaming, yelling, and it was just, it was so painful. And, um, you know, he would, he would tell me over and over, he would just say, you just don't know how to talk to people. And I really took offense to that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah. yeah an education major and of course I could teach people I could speak to people naturally um so yeah that was that was but that was like a line that came up over and over um so and I I think you know now I just see um my my disrespect got worse and worse and I think what kind of broke the camel's back was um he had bought us our first house it was so sweet and then I just started to criticize the house and nitpick the house and was very unhappy and said, well, if you get me a new house, you know, that'll be better. Like I'll, then I'll be happier because I'll have a better space. And um, so he put the house up for sale and got it, you know, with a realtor under contract. And um, we got an offer for cash, but we had to move in two weeks and um, so my, I guess my control really got out of hand and I just made plans without him for us to live with my family. Like, we're just going to go move in with my family. So he came home from work and I was like, hey, don't worry about it. We're just going to go live with mom and dad. Um, and I don't know that that really broke something in him. I think, you know, that I just pushed him aside and, um, just decided what our family was doing. Um, and so actually when we moved in with my parents, he started drinking every night. Um, and that really affected me, but I tried not to like dwell on it or whatever. And then it got a little nasty one time. And so he said, okay, I'll give it up for a month. We were still living with my parents and he was like, and I'm going to see. And I had no idea what he was going to see. Like, I had no idea. But I think he was trying to gauge if I would be happy. Do you know what I mean? Like, if he gave this up, would I then be happy? Because I had sabotaged his plans and taken over. And so at the end of the month, he was like, it, uh, it just wasn't worth it. So I wasn't happy. And so he went back to drinking. And that has been for eight years now. Um, and so I guess that's part of the explosive arguments. Um, I don't know how far back to go or how, how much to give, you know, but these are, uh, these are great stories you're sharing with. I would just appreciate the authenticity and you, you sound so accountable Suzette for, right. Cause you look at your early marriage through new perspectives. Now it sounds like. Oh my gosh. It was terrible. Yeah. In a stroke of amazing feminine genius, he came to me with the idea while we were uh, living with my parents that he wanted to move where he was from, which was not too far away. Um, but he wanted to move like next door to um, fr family. And I was really reticent about it, but I somehow used the magic kitty litter words, I call them. Um, I said, I really would rather not live next to family. I would like our own space, but if you think that's best, I'll follow you. Mm. Um, yeah. A one magical phrase. Uh, <laughs> I wish I could have kept that up, but anyway, yeah. um, so we got out there. It wasn't what we hoped for he or I, 
And, um, and then, uh, sadly, uh, his dad, um, was not well mentally and, uh, that just, it ended in his, his father's death. And that was very difficult for him. And so we were living next door, but his dad passed. And so the drinking just like, like flew out of the window and the arguments, it was just so horrible. And I mean, I could see the children cringe when like my voice would just get elevated, like in expectation of the argument. And I mean, I could almost, I almost had it memorized, like what I would say and then what he would say and then how I would respond and then how I would act and then I would pout and I would cry. And, oh my God, it was so toxic. It was so terrible. Um, so. Tiring. Yeah. Too. yeah. Yeah. It was exhausting. And all the while we're just having like baby after baby. It was just oh. crazy. Yeah. How, how many children do you have? Now we have six. Oh. Um so, so, uh, yeah, but oh, I guess to back it up a little bit, when we were living with my parents, um, the, the amount of disconnect, Laura, I had a miscarriage and I, I woke up and, um, I mean, I was, you know, miscarrying the baby and I begged him to stay home with me. I just didn't want to be alone and going through that. And he did not say a word he just left for work like he just left and you know i mean at that point as a woman you're like he's heartless (laughs) exactly oh yeah you think i mean how can you think anything except there's definitely something wrong with him he's not a normal husband he doesn't care about me he doesn't love me so i mean yeah it just and so i guess that just progressed and so um he changed careers and he got introduced to Zig Ziglar, um, who you quote in one of your books. I, I'm a fan. I love, I love me some Zig. Yeah. Zig is our man. You are our lady and Zig is our man. <laughs> <laughs> That's high praise. Thank you. <laughs> oh, and so he, uh, yeah, he started reading Zig and kind of really started working on himself and, um, invited me to take a course that was based on Zig's work. And so we took that together and that was probably, that was during the pregnancy of our fifth baby. And that was probably like the beginning of feeling like, oh my gosh, maybe like, maybe this could work. Cause it, up until that point, I was like, every year our wedding anniversary would come. And I was like, am I going to do this another year? Like, I'm so miserable. Like it's horrible. Um, you know, it was just like, and I, and I felt bad for the kids like that. I was like, they they will never get married. (laughs) Like they will do everything they can to not get married because this is a terrible example. So, um, okay. So he started listening to Zig. He changed careers, like took a plunge into the dark, changed careers Um, and kind of invited me on that journey. And so he came to me and he wanted to restore his dad's house, which had been sitting vacant for a few years now. And, um, I think Zig had put me into the right mindset, you know? So I was just super optimistic and I was like, of course, yeah, like let's do it, you know? And so we did that and, um, we moved to that house. It was gorgeous and it was beautiful, but we were still not in the location that I was hoping for. So um, he found a house in like the neighborhood that I wanted to live in since I was young. And he bought that house and we moved in and we started fixing that one up. And um, that is sort of when it was like really, really awesome and really, really terrible. So um, he came home one night with beer, of course, and the argument started even before he had twisted off top. And I don't know, just something in me. I was like, I've got to do something, something different. Like this is so horrible. So I went to a support group and that was like so weird because it was not really as supportive as I felt like they made themselves out to be. 
And oh. the, re- the reason is, is because I felt like they said self-care, but it was sort of with a chip on their shoulder. Like you do that, like you take care of yourself, girlfriend, because watch out, you know, like for oh. when the, when the ceiling falls, like you're going to be ready. Like it was just this ominous, like that everything will, you know, your husband is ill and he's going to get worse and it's going to be terrible. And so you take uh-huh. care of yourself. And I was oh. like, wow, this is so hopeless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not very optimistic there. Not, not towards the outcome you wanted to have. It sounds like. No. And yeah. I mean, we, um, you know, we, we, have a faith we follow and that faith believes in new life and in, in resurrection. And so I was like, everything this meeting is telling me is like against sort of a core value for me. So I took the idea of self-care and tried to do it without resentment. Um, (laughs) And that just, that was just terrible. So that was in August of 2020. And then um, it was 2021 came around. We're living in this house. We're kind of flipping it. I'm so happy with the location. He's not so happy. He's kind of a more of a country guy. He didn't really love being in this city. So he's trying to muddle through, you know, and his wife is very resentful and unhappy <laughs> and picking arguments with him. And, um, it was the night before Valentine's day. And I just was like, this is so terrible. And I could see our anniversary coming up in May. And I was like, this is just going to suck again. Like I wasn't getting cards. I wasn't getting flowers. Like there was nothing happening, you know? Um, and so I Googled February 13th of 2021. I Googled like, how to get my husband to give me something for Valentine's day. <laughs> I love it. I love yeah. it. I just wanted to know that I was like seen, you know? Ah, yeah. Uh, and I think every woman wants that, right? We want to be recognized and treat, given special treatment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Like you say, like cherish, like I, I gave my all to this man, you know, like, this- yeah. Yeah. Everything. And had six, six of his babies. Right. So yes. yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Like, oh my gosh, it was just, um, so I did that. And what your husband really wants on Valentine's day, it's not what you think by Laura Doyle came up. I'm pretty sure that's the title or it's close. And, um, it was a blog post you had written and, uh, I read it and I was like, oh my gosh, I am a failure, (laughs) but it was in the best way. You know what I mean? Like, like I real like, it's kind of that realization, like I am failing, but there's the hope of like, I could be succeeding, you know? Yeah. It's a, a a blessing and a curse at the same time. It sounds like, like, it feels like a, a slap in the face, but also you got some hope. It sounds like. Yes. And just like, oh my gosh, in something you wrote, you wrote about being the goddess of Wikipedia. I so, yeah, yeah, I shamefully identify as that woman. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah. So I just was not, not, um, yeah. I just realized in that moment, like, oh my gosh, I am not doing I'm doing very little. Right. Um, The only thing I had probably done well was show up for intimacy, but I didn't like actually show up. I was, it was just like availability. Do you know Uh, what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah, just, just being there, but maybe not being excited or making it fun or playful or not at all. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how he survived that. I felt so bad. Um, but, um, so I read that. So, and, and whatever the article said, I didn't reread it, but, um, whatever it said, I did that night, like I came out and I did it. 
And I knew from the support group not to engage him if he had started drinking. That did, that was like the one thing that helped. So I did whatever your article said. And the next day we did, you know, went, did church, whatever, came home. He went to the store and he, and my, my bargain with myself was like, I'm going to just try this. And like, I'm just going to see before I pay for the book. Like I'm going to just see. And he came home and he like threw something across the kitchen counter and, uh, still in the grocery bag. And he said, your Valentine's day gift is in there. And he walked out of the room (laughs) and it was a bar of dark chocolate. (laughs) So, (laughs) <laughs> so it worked. You Googled how to get your husband to pay you something <laughs> for Valentine's Day. And he did. He so. did. And he was such a a little jerk about it, but I can't blame him, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like maybe all he had right then was like he got you something and he yeah, and he wanted to give it to you. Um, but it wasn't like two dozen long stem roses and, you know, or rose petals in the bath and yeah. And a bottle of champagne or something, but it sounds like no. you, I bet you like dark chocolate. Is that right? Oh girl. I love these <laughs> dark chocolate. <laughs> so I got you something you like. Oh yeah. yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Absolutely. He, um, and, and so at that point I was just, I mean, you know, and that was not even 24 hours. I was sold. I was so sold. So, um, that started, you know, um, I think I bought it on Kindle, uh, like a month or two weeks later because I was so afraid for him to see that I was going to like try to be a better wife and maybe I would really sabotage this. So I'm scared of, of self-sabotaging myself. So I'm so grateful you have um, the empowered wife on the Kindle because that was that was so helpful. Um, but I did read The Surrendered Wife and that was like my little Bible at first. I think I've read it three times now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've read The Empowered Wife like four times um, and I've listened to it on Audible. Um, so um yeah from like that was that was i guess kind of the first moment of success i'm looking over my little oh my gosh yeah, yeah. so the, so i'm so curious to know do you remember what you said or did differently after you read that blog cuz you got such fast results like i don't remember what it says in the blog <laughs> but i mean i think everyone's googling it right now like what does that blog say <laughs> <laughs> We all want to know. Do you, you could like apply it for Christmas, you know? <laughs> yeah, you could apply it for Christmas or <laughs> anniversaries or birthdays or, but um, yeah. Do you, do you know what you said or okay, it's, wait, kind of, I, it's a blur now? <laughs> it is a little bit of a blur. Okay. I think okay. I was, well, let's, um, it's okay. Let me, I want to hear what else you started doing differently than what you had been doing. Um. Once you got the books, it sounds like you got pretty inspired about that. Did you start doing something differently? Yes, I did. The first thing that I did um, was to relinquish control. And that was, um, um, it was so wonderful and um, just freeing and, um it, it was, it was so fabulous. I remember that we, so, um, my son wrote in his journal, I am grateful for a happy mom. Like, oh. it was just like, oh. I mean, yeah, I mean that, and that was just like, so huge. Um, you know, it was just in that moment of relinquishing control that I was, Um, I was really able to just show up like for the kids instead of thinking about what my husband's doing or thinking about what my husband's not doing or thinking about who my husband is talking to or who he's interacting with or like, um, you know, it was, it was huge because when he made that career shift a few years before he was, he's in a more dominant or 
mm, a workplace where there are more dominating females. And so I, I had a lot of self doubt about like, you know, I'm just like this like mom at home and he's with all these women, like dressed to the nines every day who are very assertive and very, um, I don't know. They just intimidated me. And that felt scary that that was the environment that he was in, you know? It, yeah. Uh, yeah. But I, so anyway, um, I, okay. And then another thing that a friend had tried to call me out on this years ago that I complain a lot and she had said it really sweetly. She said, um, I just don't find that complaining works for me. <laughs> And I, I was kind of going on and on. And I was like, oh, you think I'm complaining? <laughs> and I, I, Girl, I was in it. You know what I mean? I was just relishing it. Right. And, and uh, I was like, huh. And, and I didn't, I wish I had taken it so hard, but I did it. So when I read complaining as a lazy desire, like I felt like bells and whistles went off in my brain. And that was a huge focus for me, probably for the first time three months was just relinquishing control and um, rephrasing like everything that I said to everyone. Um, And that I was so quiet. You know, I think you talk about that. Yeah. I became a mute for a while. It sounds like you did too. Cause everything out of my mouth was a complaint at first yeah. or criticism or control yes. or disrespect or yeah. Contempt. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. So yes. you started rephrasing. How, so tell me about that. Like, how would you do that? Um, okay. So I was a little nervous. So like, I, I even practiced it with my kids. Like, instead of saying like, this room looks awful, I would say like, I would love to see the floor in here. Oh, and, fantastic. You so know, expressing desires in a way that inspired your kids. Oh, how did they respond to that? Well, they did, you know, like most elementary age children would do and like shove everything under the bunk beds, but I could see the floor. (laughs) (laughs) They they wanted you to be happy too. It sounds like they just, they responded. And so was that a better response? And if you'd said, how would you have said it before? Boy, this place is, this room is a mess like that. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a wreck. I can't see anything. You know, somebody's going to trip and fall. Like, and how did they respond when you said that stuff? Oh, ran outside. Yeah. They just went away. <laughs> like, they just, <laughs> like ran as fast as they could <laughs> away. Okay. So, so you noticed you were getting a better response from your kids by saying these things. Yes. And so it kind of gave me courage to, to use it with my husband. Like, um, okay. So something in the, the house we were in, it had original wood floors, but they had been damaged. And so um, I, I was able to just say, like, I really love the hardwood floor. And I know you think we should change it. And I would really love that. And then, I mean, the man could not get to Home Depot fast enough, you know? <laughs> Did he leave like tire marks in the driveway, like trying to get there quick? To get those floors for you? Yeah. I love it. I love it, Suzette. Well, that must have been, that must have felt so good. Yes. Yes. And and the the argumenting completely dissolved like within the first two weeks, probably. I mean, just like it is so rare that we argue. Um it is so rare. Um, and so, wow, 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 wow. Wait, how much were you arguing for? Like every Friday and Saturday night. <laughs> okay. So for sure, twice a week <laughs> Yeah, with random Wednesdays thrown in or <laughs> probably. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you went from like at least two big arguments a week to hardly ever, like what, like once a month or mm, like once every nine months, maybe. Wow. Wow. Um, and Laura, when we would argue, I would, he would talk to me. I think you, uh, you know, you used the phrase verbal abuse. I called it. He was talking to me like I was a man. Like I felt like, 
you know, that's how he would yell at some guy who's goofing off or something. And um, all of that has dissipated. I mean, he speaks with so, I feel so cherished now. And his words are so loving. Now, if he's had a few drinks and I bring up something that I know is bait for him, like Uh if I do it to myself, then, you know, he's going to say something or I'm going to say, you know, like sure. you can always pick a fight if you want to still. Right. Oh, girl. The I'm good. There. <laughs> <laughs> you don't lose any of those options. They're, they're always there. I can relate. I can relate. Sometimes I do it too. It's like, why, why am I doing this? Like, oh, let me just uh, backpedal out of this conversation real quick here. Yeah. Oh, I yes. love it. Yes. Um, and so, you know, I mentioned how he would say, I didn't know how to talk to people. That was sort of in our conversation, you know, that he just, I mean, in our arguments, he would say that, well, okay. So I started that in February in June or July. I, I guess I was trying, I was probably dipping into some control, wanting, wanting to take over like that false idea that things are okay if I know about them or if I have my hand in it. And I started saying something, I was getting all revved up. And he looked at me, like kind of cocked his head and he said, you know how to talk to people. (gasps) Oh my gosh. (laughs) Oh, it's exactly the opposite of what he used to say. I, girl, so, yes. must have stopped in your tracks. I, it, I, I thought I was going to die in that moment. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, so busted. I mean, it was just like, oh my gosh. Um, and in, in all of this, I had come across something that said, um, you know, when you do this, like when you become, um. I call it my best self or who I was made to be. Like when you do that, everything else, like your husband is not going to take leftovers anymore. You know what I mean? No, like he's no. not going to take. So, and it was so refreshing to see him hold, like hold me to that. Mm. You know, like. Um, we felt yeah. good. Felt like love. He saw the best in you. Yes. Yes. It was like a spouse fulfilling prophecy to you almost. Almost. Yeah, you yeah. are right. Okay. SFPs. Listen, I have the funniest relationship with these things. I use those things and I just throw them away. And it's so ridiculous. It is so ridiculous how powerful they are. They I are. mean, yeah. look, for a little while, I wanted to play ball with him. He had taught me to play pickleball. And so we were playing ball and then he stopped. And so I thought, well, I want to play ball with him. So I just started telling him, hey, I love that you play with me. I love playing with you. And I miss playing with you. Girl, he started lining up babysitters. We started playing pickleball. (laughs) (laughs) But bam. I got sick of it. I quit saying it. He quit doing it. Like it was just like done. I mean. (laughs) So isn't it amazing you had all this power in your marriage you just didn't know how to access it before but it sounds like you got well acquainted with all your power yes and you know you say it so well like how when you're like you're seated in your power and it really is that that um, posture of being seated of receiving and they're just being so diplomatic and dignified. And as soon as I start like trying to do things, you know, like a a more aggressive getting into things, it just all falls apart. Like it completely falls apart. Yeah. Gosh, I relate to that so much. Suzette. I love that. How you say that. It's interesting because I, yeah, we, we talk about how receptivity is the seat of feminine power. Mm -hmm. And that's what I hear you saying that it just like, yeah, it's seated. It's not, it's not aggressive. It's not striving. It's just receptive. 
and that's where the power comes from. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah your stories are great examples of that. Oh, I love them. Yeah. Yeah. You, this is such a big transformation. So, um, well, well, anything else? What else did you do that was different than what you had done before? Um, okay. So, um, he is really big on accountability. So when I started coming to him, um, and saying, I'm sorry for being disrespectful. I was really surprised. Um, he like walked at that right away. And he was like, do not ever tell me that. And I was like, okay. So I had to back up and had to sit with myself. And I was like, well, he really hates when I'm controlling and critical. So my apologies have to be, I'm sorry when I was critical or I'm sorry for being controlling. Um, and the using that has, um, it's just been life-changing for our marriage, you know? Um, um, that's, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So those, this is a good example of being the expert on your own life and having to use the, so he balked when you said disrespectful. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't know. I have no idea why, but that was like a, I had crossed a line. I don't know. I don't know. He did not like that. He is not. Um, sometimes you tell stories about your husband, John, and I feel like we're sitting in the living room together, but he is a musician too. Oh, yeah. So he's just, he's not that he's not like the army man kind of guy. You know what I mean? Like he's, yeah. he's playful and he's relaxed. And, and I, I just think, disrespect was I don't know it's just too much you know it's too much okay okay all right um, well I love it yeah you had to I mean this is true for everybody right we get to experiment with the skills and try them on and see if they fit for you and that that one just didn't really fit it sounds like and you modified it to say controlling or criticism uh and that and that is that is a good fit for you Yes. Right? yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I, I dislike it more because I feel like I have to say exactly. <laughs> oh, that's you interesting. Know? Cause I thought disrespect, that was very hard. That was very, very hard to say, but um, for you control and criticism feel even more hard to say. That's interesting. I think the, the chief phrases are all, um, you know, like the way you teach children to teach, say, please. And thank you. You're trying to Mm -hmm. cultivate a grateful heart. Right. And Mm -hmm. so the words are always for that, that for me, like trying to connect to that part of my heart. And, um, it sounds like the words criticism and control actually were more, uh, it was a more of a humbling words to use than disrespect for you. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Okay. And so journaling was another thing, a skill that I had started right away, probably with the relinquishing control. Um, So journaling the 22 things like Zig said, you know, about him and then um, texting him and other women have talked about this on the podcast. And I just want to say that it rang true for me too. Like when I started expressing gratitude to him, I mean, that was so far off the mark of where we had been. It was in genuine. If I said it in person, it was in genuine. If I texted it to him, like, I don't even know if the man read the messages, (laughs) but (laughs) it was good for my heart because it put me in the right place. Mm, Um, Beautiful. Yeah. So, and that was a big thing. Like I was looking for a big change at the six month mark. And then I realized that I was, um, I kind of was sinking my own ship. I had a few friends walking with me and who still walk with me on this, who have read the book and, you know, just the, the damage of having expectations about what will come or what will happen. Um, you know, it is, it is not linear. Um, and so keeping those gratitudes and, and the journaling and writing my desires, you know, big and small, all of that kind of 
even if what was happening in my marriage wasn't what I wanted, it kept me where I needed to be. Mm. You're on your own paper, literally on your journal paper. (laughs) Is that right? (laughs) Yes. Yeah. That That is true. Uh, Uh, Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, well, I, I'm so curious to hear what your marriage is like now. Um, okay. So there was, okay. There's two things to get into that. So um, when about the nine month mark hit of doing this, we were in the car, just visiting, had the kids, whatever. And he turned to me and um, he said, he looked me in the eyes and said, I don't know what you are doing, but whatever it is, please keep doing it. Oh, yay. I know. (laughs) Did you feel like you had won the Super Bowl at that time or like something something big, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Yeah, it, it was amazing. And we were still having like, you know, like there was someone at work that he was very uh, emotionally connected with like a female. And that was a huge source of pain at this time um, that we were working through. But it was like, I had to look at what I was perceiving, which was that relationship and what was actually happening, which was that he was telling me to please keep doing what I'm doing. You know, like I had to stick with that. Um, so yeah. Okay. So while I was writing my desires, we had happened upon another neighborhood, I guess you could say we're real estate junkies, Uh but um, that we wanted to move to, that was a little better for all the kids, more nature. He was really, he had given the city a good go and he just felt like he couldn't do it there. And I've really learned, um, with the skills that when, um, I'll use his own words. Like when he comes to me with something, he's bringing me his best. And, and he sees that I, I see that now I used to feel like he was, you know, not so. Um, so anyway, he came to me, he was like, I just can't do this. I never leave the city. Like, you know, we can't, I can't do this. So, but he found this spot he wanted he to show us. So we all drove out and um, out in the woods. And that is where we are now. But I wrote my desire down. I was like, okay, this is what he thinks. Like, this is a whatever he thinks. So um, I had gotten really good at self-care by that point. And, you know, my gratitudes and I felt like I was living the skills. So he came to me one morning and he left for work actually. And then he called me, which he never does. And he was like, Hey, did you get my email? And I'm like, you just left and you're calling me. like, what? <laughs> Something's up. Yeah. So yeah. I was so confused. And so um, he said, check your email. Like, I think I found, I think I found a house for us. So anyway, he found a house in this neighborhood that had been writing my little desire down. He had no idea I was writing down to get into this neighborhood. And you're um, kidding. No, you never shared it with him. He just knew he just, I didn't know. Like we were like, Oh, that would be so great to live there one day. And that was (sighs) it. But then I was writing on my three to five year goals like, uh, you know, or desires, whatever, like I would love to be in that neighborhood. So anyway, calls me, found a house, um, purchased it on Christmas Eve. Like he renovated it like a ton. There, we still have some stuff, but it, so what I'm trying to say is like now my desires, how you talk about your desires are the North Star. Like that is so 100% true. And I don't even think the man knew that I had desires before the skills, you know, like, I don't know if there was an awareness of that. Like, this is like, um, and, and he wants to like learn me and study me. And so I love dark chocolate. I love cheese. So 
he came to me the other week and he was like, I think I want to bring you a new cheese to try every week. Like, <laughs> like he thinks it's going to make you happy. He's looking yeah. for, he's like, how can I even more delight Suzette? That's his yeah. goal in life. It sounds like. Yes. Yes. I mean, just, and like how you said, they'll do like the craziest things, you know, for you. It's just so funny. Like, um, he, um, he, so like I started doing pottery again for my self care and I paint a little bit, but it's easier to just show up to pottery class and, you know, do my thing there. So, but he keeps the kids and he does, um, he does dishes and laundry like so much. I will tell you in the past nine months, he has had more times of sobriety than the past eight years of our marriage. Um, Like just choosing not to drink some weeks and choosing not to go for the extra drink and choosing, um, I, I don't know. Just like, why, why is that? Suzette? Um, I don't even know. He said a few times, like, I really see how much you're doing. And I know I should, I should cut back on this and I really want to do that for you. Um, and I want to show up as my best self. So I have tried SFPs with that, but it's just, I feel like it, he knows that yeah. desire already and I don't need to, to plug that one. Do you know no. what I mean? Like well, it's a he's, little... Yeah. He's got the desire himself. It sounds like. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Wow. So he's cut back on his drinking. Like, and that's a coincidental timing, isn't it? Those nine months. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I, not such a pill to live with. <laughs> I, well, <laughs> right. I, you are so cute. Your accountability is super endearing, Suzette. And, oh. um, but you know, and I love that because I know I was hard to live with before I had the skills. I, I did not know how to talk to people just like, <laughs> like your husband used to say about you. And so, um, I, yeah, it kind of goes together. Maybe he doesn't, he doesn't have, he's not as much, he's not in pain, maybe possibly we, I mean, that's on his, I'm getting all over his paper and I don't need to be because the point is you have all these miracles in your marriage and um, you know what you did and how, and it sounds like you feel empowered to, to create these more peaceful, sober, um, cherished moments that you guys are experiencing now. Yes. And a a huge one um, before this last move was Okay, this is so personal, but I feel like for the women out there who have a husband who drinks, maybe this will, you know, lift them up. Like, I just wanted to be intimate when he was sober. Like, I wanted to know that he saw me and and loved me. And that that was like a crucible, I felt like. And um When I started using the skills and after he acknowledged that I now know how to talk to people, um, he, he started initiating intimacy in the mornings and, (sighs) you know, I mean, he's like dry as bone then. So yeah, um, that, I mean, that was like, that was truly a, a prayer of, you know, five, six, seven years of but I had to get out of his, get off of his paper, like get out of his face, you know, for him to have that freedom. Um, so beautiful. uh, So it sounds like, I mean, I know for me, there were so many things about my husband, I was trying to get him to cut back on or do more of or whatever. And it was almost like, instead of hitting the brakes, I was hitting the accelerator, um, Mm -hmm. which it sounds Mm -hmm. like was your experience with the drinking. Yes. And, yes. and that as soon as you got off of his paper, um, he responded to your desires. So beautiful. Yes. Wow. Great stories. And, um, you know, I think that I, I really knew that I was doing the skills well too. This was sort of like a weird thing. Um, 
because he started asking me if I was being faithful to him because I was so happy on my own. Like he had this, I don't know. I apparently had a fear. I don't, I didn't know, you know, he was suspicious. So, he was suspicious because you had, it was such a dramatic change in you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So at that time, I started watching your Amazon Prime series at night. And um, in our marriage, he had always dictated sort of like what we watched, when we watched it, whatever. That was like TV was like his thing. So I started watching while he was like in the back taking a shower. I'd put on my movie first (laughs) and I started putting on Laura Doyle on Amazon Prime and um the first couple of times, I mean, the man thought I was crazy. So, but then he started lurking, like he would just kind of hang around the corner with his beard, kind of watching, <laughs> watching around the corner. And do you know, after like three or four episodes, he was like, what is this? I, I need, I want to watch this. I want to see what's going on here. I was like, okay, you're welcome. I said, this is like girl festival though. I mean, just, this is your warning, you know? And, um, So he sat down and he watched this and he was like, this is amazing. (laughs) He loved it. So um, he started watching that and he started really asking me about what I was doing. And just that we could have that connectedness to just talk candidly about my journey as a person. And um, that's been just so freeing and um. He really, you know, he recommends it to other men who come to him about their wives, criticizing them in front of family members or just feeling smothered by their wives. And so, you know, he is trying to share the empowered wife (laughs) with all the men's wives out there. (laughs) He's got my back. I love it. (laughs) So sweet. Um, Yeah. So, I mean, our marriage is full of laughter and I feel so adored and cherished. Um, I really, um, I said, I love the laughter in our marriage, but he, he said, uh, I asked him the little questions too. And he said that uh, it is much more than laughter. He said that it is connectedness and more than ever, the two have become one. Oh, that just melts me. That's so romantic. It's yeah. so romantic. <laughs> and he said, I had to say that our intimate life has exploded. That is his words. <laughs> I love it. Gosh, congratulations. What Thank an accomplishment. You. you have the marriage, I think, that we all dream of when we stand at the altar and say, I yes. do. It can be real. Yes. And this is after six children and how many years? Okay. Uh, 13 years, Mary. Yep. And six kids. Yep. Um, yeah. He has started telling me he would marry me every day of his life. (laughs) I know it's like so savvy. I love it. (laughs) Yeah. And he brings you a different cheese every week. And yeah, I mean, and those hardwood floors got right in as soon as you desired them. So um, this man is crazy about you. Yes. And yeah. And so you've changed. It sounds like he's changed too. Is that, do I have that right? Um, let's see. Um, I would say yes, but maybe not so much as like, um, you know, changing from like red to blue but if it's blue just a more vibrant and deeper hue of blue you know like just a a better a better you know i don't know it's like like, you're bringing out his best by being your best is what it sounds like and he does sound wonderful he is so so wonderful (laughs) um and i know you there's one podcast I think where you talk about John will sing a little song to you. Like I kind of like you too. Um, and oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so like through the years, um, 
in when all of my like controlling started to show up, he has been so consistent, Laura. And he would sing, uh, if you don't know me by Uh, now. (laughs) He would sing that over and over. And so now it's like, it used to be like, um, like, we were about to have an argument, yeah. you know, if he's the song. and now it's just like, it's just fun and playful. And, you know, if I'm, I'm stepping out of my zone and onto his paper, he'll just start he'll just humming it. that song. So <laughs> now it's uh, so, yeah. So now it means like, you do know me. He feels seen. Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. So there's emotional safety at your house. Oh my gosh. Yes. 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 Yeah. He says that I can show up as a friend to him now. Like where before. Yeah, I know. I feel, I know. And I I guess you probably felt like this about your husband too. Like I'm, I'm so grateful for how patient he was with me, you know? So grateful. Yeah. Isn't it amazing how how many, I got so many chances. There was so much grace. Oh, so much grace. Mm-hmm. Yes. <sighs> yep. Wow. Suzette, this is fantastic. What, what's your best tip to someone who is where you were, where there was, um, you know, every Friday and Saturday night were explosive arguments that were pre-scripted really. And mm-hmm. um, it was so terrible. Like it was just, it, you know, she's there now and she wants where he can't do enough to make her happy. And he says, you know how to talk to people. And, <laughs> um, and he says, um, you know, to the two have become one and all these romantic things. What, what's your best tip for her? Um, okay. Well, my best tip would be to, uh, to look at what he is doing right to look for evidence of the goodness in him and yeah just keep keep doing that like don't lose sight of that um no matter you know how strong or big the uh, the negative may be like if you can just focus on that positive and really illuminate it you know um and assume, assume, even when he says the most horrible things, like assume that he's coming from a good place and try to figure out what the heart message is there. Like what his intention and in saying that can be. I would say those two things would, I would start there. Beautiful. I love that. Gratitude, the most powerful intimacy skill of all, right? Is finding your, finding the evidence of his goodness. And what, um, what do you think you would say to Suzette if you could tell her what you know now? Oh, yeah. I, oh, geez. Um, I would say, listen to what he is saying to you because he would tell me you need a hobby when we would argue and go somewhere (laughs) and um you know he he was just able to see you know this may not work for every woman but if your husband is telling you things that could be a good thing I would say really take that to heart don't just brush it away. Like if I had really gotten a hobby when he told me to get a hobby, like pottery or painting. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. Um, yeah. He would say, you're an artist, go make something. (laughs) (laughs) Like, you know, if I probably was landed hurtfully, probably did it or. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like, Oh, like, what do you know? Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I mean, that was just, It was absurd. I'm like home all day with all these babies and cleaning. And I just made you a hot dinner. You know what I mean? Like, uh, so yeah. Yeah. Suzette, how has this impacted your children? Um, I would say that my sons, um, 
it it has they delight in finding ways to do little things um to contribute to the family and because they know how happy and proud it makes but you know my husband and I but they really they look for that and I I think that's a I really think that's a masculine gift to be able to like hunt out something like that, you know? Um, so I love seeing that. And then for our daughters, whew, I am having to backpedal on, <laughs> you know, teaching them to just sit in their receptivity and um, to not have to power through and do things for themselves how to care for themselves. Like um, I would say my girls really are loving learning what they like, you know, like one of them really loves her nails done. And then one really loves brushing her hair, you know, and just teaching them it's good to love that. And it's okay for us to do those things while the boys do the dishes or whatever, you know, (laughs) like, I love that. I love it. Yeah. Wow. It just feels so good to be able to to show them that, to be that role model for them. Yes, it is so inspiring. Um, It really is. And it feels hopeful, you know, even though I did things poorly for so long. Um, You didn't know. You didn't know. No, I did not. Nobody ever told you. No, not at all. But not here all. you are telling everybody right now that's listening. <laughs> <laughs> There's a better way. There's a way. And it uh, it's, yeah, it's tremendous. Suzette, I, I just want to congratulate. I'd like to give you a wife award really for fixing your family because oh. uh, you are super inspiring. And uh, yeah, I feel, I feel really filled up from getting to hear this whole story. It's personal. Um, it's mostly private stuff, right? That you're sharing so openly. And uh, it just, I just couldn't be more excited that we got to hear your wonderful story today. Oh, thank you so much, Laura. I'm, I am honored to be a part of ending divorce. That is a noble goal. Yeah. Yeah. You are, you are doing it. Good job. <laughs> If you'd like to be my guest on the Empowered Wife podcast and share about how you fixed a struggling relationship using the six intimacy skills, I would love to interview you. Just go to lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest to let me know that you are willing to make a big contribution to ending world divorce by telling your relationship story. I look forward to meeting you. That's lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest. Listen and subscribe to the Empowered Wife podcast. Next week, I will share what to give him for Valentine's Day. In the meantime, I hope you're having lots of fun. Today's fun fact is that I don't know if talking to my plants makes them grow better, but it sure feels good to be a part of something.